Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. We're back in War Thunder having a look at some of the change logs over the last few days because once again they are continuing from the last update. It has actually been kind of interesting with this update. I've been having a few chats with different people about it and there is a lot of people who are kind of just not really put off War Thunder right now but don't really see too much for them at the moment. It might be because of the new event cycle, it might be because the update didn't have any huge bangers in it. It might also just be because you're know, waiting for the next stage, which of course is April Fools. There's a bunch of different reasons uh, when it comes to War Thunder for you know uh, uh, time to kind of like take a bit off. I feel like it's one of those games that does offer a lot to do. Um, you've pretty much at any time. You know, last week we talked about the idea of how there's just too many events going on at the moment, but a lot of them aren't like huge things. They're they're not massive things to kind of focus on. So right now, uh, we have still some change logs going on. You also have the ship event, uh, the flagship event going, tank football still going, pages of history, and also a few other things. But the main thing that's coming is, of course, the April Fool's event, which is a large part of the War Thunder calendar. So hopefully that's good. Hopefully it's something to look forward to for people to see. The first update uh, came out yesterday, and it is update 2.35.0.46, and this uh, talks about some bugs with Naval, but the first one was the SU-25K. There was a bug where the voiceover was in Chinese, while in the test flight has been fixed, which is quite hilarious. Such a random little thing. Once again, how does that happen? Um, since, you know, the SU-25K has been in the game for a while, it's not as if, you know... There's been a bunch of issues with it or anything kind of causing that. For some reason, it's just uh, there in the flesh. Then when it comes to naval vessels, uh, there was some bugs fixed too. There was a bug where projectiles could interact incorrectly with the water, causing them to hit the underside of the ships, and that has been fixed. Projectiles could ignore the surface of the water and hit a ship from below. Because of this bug, it could seem, for example, the 100 to 140 millimeter shells could penetrate the main armor belts of ships. And this is kind of an interesting point, because first of all, that is ridiculous that that was a bug. With When you bring in a new system of damage, one of the things that you don't want is a ton of bugs with the other side of it, right? So the armor stuff that it interacts with. And it seems like with this update, there was a ton of stuff uh, where basically uh, there was a ton of bugs with it. Whether it was vehicles just missing pieces of armor, whether it was the interactions between them or not, everything has gone kind of kaput in that sense. And to be honest, for me, the, the first few uh, days of the update were quite fun, just going around and smashing things in the head. And now we're back to the more standard meta when it comes to naval. And obviously uh, that, at least to me, isn't too fun because there is straight up just vehicles that you can face that you can't really do anything against. And it's just waiting for the inevitable for them to just donk you. I've been playing a lot of British 5.7 recently, and British 5.7 has a very large variety of vehicles, and also at the same time has some pretty good ones. You know, the 8-inch guns from the British are quite nice, they have pretty good AP, but they also have pretty decent HG, and uh, the penetration is okay uh, compared to most, and generally you can have a good time with the amount of guns that they had. Now moving over to the Japanese vehicles with stuff like the Aoba and the Furutaka, now it's a little bit harder and you have to adjust your playstyle and use torpedoes more, and I'm finding that facing larger machines, especially stuff like battleships, which start appearing at, you know, 6-3, uh, which you can easily face in stuff like the Furutaka, are really, really tough to deal with. There's not a lot you can do against them, and you just kind of sit there and die. And that's the problem with naval, has been for a long time, the actual BR decompression of it, but at the same time, you need the player base in there to play it. And right now we're in a bit of a chicken or egg scenario. Do you expand it um, before the player base is in there and just fill it full of AI, or do you try and organically grow it and, you know, go from there? 
There was also a bug where destroyed ships began to levitate above the water that's been fixed. Yep, saw that one too. Um, <laughs> it's amazing, by the way. We have a naval event that comes in uh, for an update, and hey presto, there's a ton of naval bugs which are fixed. The real question is, is this because of the event, or is this because of the update? Or did all of these things exist before, just people didn't notice them? Obviously, from the damage side of things, none of that stuff existed before, but maybe some of the other things did, which is where it gets interesting. For graphics, the screen flickering after a tank gun was fired has been fixed, so you won't get um, issues with that. I was actually having a lot of camera shake while using specific vehicles, but overall I think it was fine. It was It's just the thing that I have on. There's a, there's a few little things that I have on that kind of annoy people for the realistic uh, aspect. Like for me, when I have like WEP on, it does vibrate like the plane a little bit. And you know, people have asked, well, doesn't this affect your performance in it? I mean, maybe, but at the same time, you know, it's something that I've become accustomed to. And also I like how it looks. War Thunder is one of those games where um, it isn't just, you know, doing the most efficient thing all the time to play. Sometimes it is just straight up, okay, this looks really nice, and I just want to kind of enjoy it. So yeah, sometimes I do get shot through bushes that, you know, I can't see people through. Sometimes, uh, you know, I don't see a, uh, let's say, naval target because uh, there is, like, something in the way. But most of the time, like, it doesn't matter, and it's just nice to have a game that looks good. I've been playing a lot of single-player games recently, like Ryzen of Rome, which is just a fantastic game, if you can get the audio to work. It was $4 on the Steam sale, and one of the things that... Uh, was really fun about Rise is the cutscenes are just beautiful. Even from like 10 years ago, they look absolutely fantastic and they are really well made. Obviously, the game itself was made as kind of a showpiece for the release of one of the consoles that came out and it still stands up to this day. I don't think I would have enjoyed that game as much if the graphics were kind of toned down and I didn't have everything on pretty high. I think it would have actually been a worse experience because of it, uh, because a lot of the kind of feel of the game is actually attached around the graphics and how they work. Uh, the other update uh, came out today, update 2.35.0.48, and uh, this one for ground vehicles, the Valentine 11, there was errors in the turret damage model that's been fixed. So there you go, I suppose that's quite nice. Never really too worried about the Valentine 11's turret because it has a shoot me spot just below the turret. The flat part where the driver is, it's like the, it's the key problem with all of the Valentines. Where they just have a hit me button and uh, it's a criminal thing. <laughs> so unfortunately the turret's, uh, you know, damage model never really mattered. For the AFT-09, those errors in the optic damage model that have been fixed too which seems kind of odd. I've always wondered if they're ever going to do something with that. Because still, to this day, you uh, actually have to fix your optics, right? But but breaking the optics doesn't do anything. It doesn't break any system. I wonder if they've had chats about the idea of trying to implement some system where if you take damage uh, on the... If you take damage on something like that, you know, you'd have like a blurred vision or a cracked screen or something like that. Whatever it is, it would be really cool to see. And then for naval vessels, uh, the display of the Triumph font and its modules in the X-Ray have been fixed, which is good, especially since there was a Battle Pass challenge for, um, you know, playing the Battle Pass vehicles uh, recently, so good to get that fixed too. Not a ton of stuff in the changelogs, but once again, we're continuing with the idea of just incremental fixes as we go along, and hopefully we'll get to a point where everything is stable. Hopefully the audio is something that's looked at soon, since, as we saw on the weekend, it's not in the best space. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Schnitzel Stroker, Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Carrion Crow, Nicholas Richardson, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, B. Young, Opium Prime, Masonocrats, Lafouche, Alan Hacker, Sam Arslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.